Lockdown may slowly be lifting, but staying shut for the moment are our gyms and leisure centres. They've already lost as much as £50 million, according to some estimates, and they're expecting fewer customers when they do reopen. It could mean an uncertain future for many. Our political correspondent, uh, Tim Donovan, has been examining some of the difficulties. So this is 170. So we'd have a 30 centimetres for the lap machine. Yeah. It's the only way they'll be allowed to reopen. Yes, so I've got 240 to there. So with proper space yeah. between equipment. We'd ask customers before using, say, this bit of kit, um, just to wipe down the touch points. And a clear protocol for cleaning up afterwards. We'd have a member of staff on, on the floor always just kind of watching customers um, obviously clean the kit and also clean it ourselves. So on, off, on. This gym in Charlton plans to allow in half the usual number. For us, the way we're doing it is we're going to have a capacity of 36 people in the gym at any one time, um, and then that gives us a trickle flow of six people every 10 minutes uh, coming through, which obviously will be bookable online. The Lido at the Leisure Centre is also opening, and there's a fair amount of cleaning to do. A fresh lick of paint, but the rules will be different. At the height of summer, 800 people can crowd in here, not this year. Children aren't being allowed back initially, swimmer numbers are restricted and you have to book a slot. This is very strange situation. I mean, there is going to be like no more than 60, 16 people per time. So it means four people per lane. This is owned and operated by GLL. It has the contract to run leisure services in 14 London boroughs. In the capital alone, empty pools and closed gyms have cost them about £2 million. Even though the furlough scheme helps with 80% of most of the staff costs, it doesn't help at all with the other bills, with the rent, the gas bills, the electric bills and everything else, they're all still there. And even just to keep this pool like this, you know, it, we have to run the pumps, we have to have the chemical in it. He's just asked London's councils for financial help. These are public assets. You know, we operate them, but, you know, these are here for the community. They've got to survive. We've had three months of no income. Now, you, you need to stick with us as government, as local authorities, but also the customers, you know, recognise that, that we're all in this together. But leisure isn't a statutory service councils must provide, and they're already telling government they can barely stay afloat given the coronavirus obligations they have. But most do seem prepared at this stage to offer a lifeline, even if they want the money recouped and repaid in better times. Tim Donovan, BBC London. Well, Hugh Edwards is from UK Active, which represents community fitness centres and gyms. Mr Edwards, we saw in that report some of the challenges being faced there by leisure centres, and this really is a tough time across the board, isn't it? Hi, I said yes, absolutely. It's been a very traumatic period since the closure of the sector on the 20th of March, uh, and a lot of work's going into not only get that financial support to the front line, uh, but also to support the plans for the reopening of the sector in the coming weeks. And I know you believe leisure centres are obviously important for health, but you also think they're important for other things, don't you, in society, in the community, like uh, crime? Absolutely. They're the fabric of, uh, of our communities, Assad, and as well as the physical and mental well-being and support they provide to communities, irrespective of age and irrespective of background, um, they are here to provide so address issues of social cohesion, address issues of isolation, and, and actually address issues of crime and the figures we have which show the social value is well into the billions and so these are protected assets they're in the fabric of our community and they need urgent support as Mark uh, illustrated on that report just now. And you say urgent support is needed I assume you're talking about from government lots of pressures on the government finances at the moment do you think you'll get help? Well we need to get help Assad, I think um, the dependency on how we address COVID-19 going forward is interdependent with the future of, of gyms and leisure centres. Um, they can support both the um, addressing the, the preventative agenda with COVID, but also the rehabilitation as well. So it's fundamental that the government ring fences funding to support both uh, the public leisure side and addresses issues in the private sector around rent as well. If money isn't ring-fenced and the other areas that you've been talking about, what's the worst-case scenario? How many gyms, leisure centres could we lose, do you think, in London? Well, we could be looking at, at, at considerable amounts of gyms being lost across the capital, uh, but also workforce as well. It is really important that um, we get the, the clarification from government on, on both the guidance and the reopening of the sector. 
and also then get that continued financial support as the sector reopens and that's tapered across the rest of the year because they are at the fabric of our communities and they will support the health and well-being as we come out of this covid crisis well we'll watch closely what happens mr hugh edson from uk active thank you very much for your time this evening thank you